morning, good morning or, or good evening, depending on where you're at. Um, welcome to today's webinar. Just to make sure this is the correct one, it is called Become a Cloud Master with HPE Helion Cloud Suite. Actually, this is um, part two of a three-part series. A couple of weeks ago, many of you probably participated in part one, which was high-level uh, general concept of uh, Helion Cloud, HPE. Uh, this one will be a little more drilled down, um, and uh, Carrie, one of the speakers, will actually kind of review part one. So if you missed it a couple weeks ago, you'll be in good shape. Um, this, this is being brought to you by HP Enterprises. Uh, next slide, please. And my name is Jim Copio, so I'm the moderator of this webinar, and just from a point of Introduction, I'm from Whitlock Infrastructure Solutions. I'm based out of Charlotte, North Carolina, U.S., and I am a Vivid member for about 17 years, um, as well as a BSM SIG leader and uh, one of the Carolina chapters in the U.S. I, I co-chair that. Uh, next slide, please. I'd like to introduce today's speakers, and they are there's two of them. The first one is Kerry Sprinkle. And she joined um, HPE back in 2008 as a pre-sales engineer and has um, been in product marketing for hmm, about six, seven years. Uh, her area of expertise, obviously, is hybrid cloud management, but also DevOps, data center automation, and disaster recovery. And she's going to be starting off the presentation and then do a handoff to our second presenter, and that is um, uh, Kiran uh, Maycarla. And Kieran is about 18 years of experience uh, working with worldwide product teams, pre-sales, channel, alliance partners, and customers through the support teams. And he uh, joined Hewlett Packard Enterprise in IT operations management um, when data center cloud computing technology was evolving. And he helped build a lot of what you're going to see uh, today. So those are our two speakers. Uh, next uh, slide, please. Just from a housekeeping perspective, this is a live webinar, and it will be recorded. So a few days later after this webinar, you'll get an automatic email in your inbox. It'll have a link. You can click on that and actually review the live uh, seminar in uh, archive mode, and then also uh, see the Q&A that will be covered, and maybe some things that we got to research and get back to everyone. And then you'll also see the slide deck that you're going to see today. Um, very importantly, there is a question pane, so you'll have the ability to ask questions. So uh, please, you'll see the question pane on the upper right-hand side, most likely. Expand that, type in your question, and just hit send, and it'll go into a queue. And we will hit as many of the questions as possible towards the end of the webinar. Um, and then, if, again, they'll be archived for access later. Uh, next, next slide, please. Okay, one more, one more slide, please. I think we're actually ready to get started. We are. Okay, so I'm going to hand it over to Kerry, and I'll bounce back towards the end with our Q&A and wrap up. So, Kerry, please proceed. Great. Thanks a lot. Um, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to our second session for the new Helion Cloud Suite that was released in July of this year. The uh, I'll do just kind of a quick recap of of our first session, uh, really just kind of a what what it is uh, or or what is the Helion Cloud Suite, uh, and then I'll pass it off to Kieran to really walk you through some of the demo scenarios and so you can can see it in action. Uh, but for those of you who may have missed the first webinar, um, just a quick overview: the Helion Cloud Suite. Again, this is a new suite that was just introduced in July, and it really collects. Uh, you know, our, our best and brightest components uh, for cloud management together. And the, uh, the premise behind it was to address numerous concerns, not just provisioning, right? That's, that's usually what people think of when they think of the cloud, right? I need to provision some services. But uh, to go beyond that and deliver everything from, uh, you know, beyond just the, the automation and orchestration to deliver that infrastructure, but also to get into multi-cloud management, uh, predictive analytics, 
uh, even provide a, a cloud native application platform uh, and uh, to enable continuous delivery and also to uh, take it really beyond all of that and do service transformation to help you migrate applications from from you know a traditional type of infrastructure or traditional type of architecture into uh, into the cloud so really this is all about going beyond just your basic hybrid cloud management platform uh, and providing everything you need uh, to deliver your services more quickly to uh, to the end users Karen, if you could hop to the next slide, please. So we really tried to address five key areas. And the first, I'm going to start at the bottom. The first one is orchestration. Uh, we provide a, a single comprehensive orchestration platform uh, with, uh, many of you may be familiar with this, it is operations orchestration. It's got uh, over 8,000 plus uh, flows and operations that you can pull together to automate various processes across IT uh, and across various uh, IT business units from you know your database to dev to test to you know anything whether you're trying to do something with a network device or do something with a, a server right whatever you're trying to tie together tie that to an application tie that into your ticketing system you know all the types of things all of the the processes that you need to automate can be done with operations orchestration. And of course, it also has um, open APIs so that if, if in our 8,000 plus flows and, and operations you can't find the one you need, um, you can create those on your own. Uh, the next one is cloud management. And really, it's, it goes beyond, again, like I said, cloud management, going beyond that and managing infrastructure for um, not just for the cloud, but also containers, managing uh, your your bare metal infrastructure, your traditional infrastructure. So the ability to tie all that together into a unified platform and manage all of those different types of um, IT infrastructures is the the premise here. And and also the ability to monitor that and you know take corrective actions, remediate things, uh, do compliance uh, for those you know business services and uh, manage that from end to end. The next category is analytics. So we've brought in our, our big data platform and uh, being able to go in and actually do some analytics, not again, not just for the cloud, but also for your current infrastructure. And again, being able to tie all of that together so that you can quickly um, recognize issues as they occur. Um, address root, uh, or identify root causes and address those issues, automatically remediate, and even do um, some predictive analytics uh, to take steps before something becomes a problem. The next category is application delivery. And I mentioned before the cloud native platforms, so the Helion Cloud Suite does include a cloud native platform so that you can do the uh, cloud native development uh, and delivery out to production. We also include uh, pipeline management and continuous delivery for traditional applications as well. So again, we we're trying to bridge that gap, right? A lot of a lot of tools, you either have to pick the old or pick the new. I'm either managing my old stuff or my new stuff. We find that most of our customers need to do both, right? We want to progress into the new, but we can't change everything overnight. Um, so we help you bridge that and be able to do application delivery uh, across that uh, across that full gamut. And then the last piece is the cloud broker and really doing uh, service transformation and, and addressing the user experience. So this provides um, a unified catalog for your uh, for your end users to be able to order their services. Um, it's it's provided across multiple devices. Right, we're not limited to. Uh, just a web interface, but also interfaces for you know, tablets, uh, phones, mobile devices, what, what have you. So uh, it's really to give that end user uh, a great consumer style experience. And next slide, please. We do offer this in three different editions. So we have HCS Express, we have Premium, and we have Ultimate. And each one is to address a specific set of use cases. So if you start with Express, it is uh, lifecycle management for physical and virtual machines. And notice there's no mention of cloud in there. 
So with the Express, this would be to manage your traditional infrastructure. Uh, to get to the cloud piece, you have to move to premium, uh, or you can start with premium. <laughs> you don't have to move. Um, the premise behind premium is really to offer a DevOps-driven multi-cloud experience so that uh, you can deliver those services very quickly uh, as your development and uh, testing teams need them. Uh, it does include that cloud-native application platform that we discussed. Uh, it does This is where you start uh, getting into the hybrid cloud management, container management, all of those different components um, here in that premium edition. And then finally we get into ultimate, which is the, the complete transformation. Um, let's talk a little bit more about those. Karen, if you'll jump to the next slide, we'll talk a little bit more about each one of those, and then I'll hand it off to, for the demo. So for the Express, it's really all about infrastructure automation. So this does give you um, the first three parts, right? You still get the orchestration platform. Uh, you get management, not cloud management, but management of your, your infrastructure, uh, physical, virtual, uh, that type of thing. And, uh, and you get some analytics, right? So we can do some capacity analytics and, and some basic, uh, provide some basic services there. Now moving into premium, next slide please. So moving into premium, we start adding a little bit more. Now we add that application delivery piece. And this enables you to provide the platforms that your dev and test teams need uh, to be able to do continuous delivery. So um, it also gives you a bit more on each of the others, right? So into that management piece, we add cloud management, um, we add discovery, we add um, multi-cloud management as well as container management. Um, it strengthens all of the automation components, all of the analytics components, so you just you get a little bit more uh, of each of the pieces as you move through the additions. And then finally, we get into the ultimate. Next slide, please. And the ultimate is where you get uh, the complete service transformation component. So this is this is where you'll have the ability not only to go in and, and do some analysis of your your existing applications, but actually will help you uh, transform those or, or migrate those to the cloud, if you will. Um, so we'll we can take a look at, like I said, we can do the discovery with the the premium. With the ultimate, we can take that discovery and actually help you determine. Uh, the best way to migrate that application to the cloud and help you with that migration process. Um, it also includes that cloud broker piece to uh, give you the enhanced end user experience. So uh, it it really starts to focus on complete service delivery, um, even from a you know if you look at some of the things that were available before. I mentioned compliance, for example. So compliance in premium. You know, you can do compliance for servers and, and operating systems and that type of thing. This takes it to the service level so that I could actually do compliance for an entire business service and I could look at a particular business service and, and know whether or not that's, that entire service is compliant, not just looking at the individual components. So this is really service transformation, service level management, um, and that's the, the concept behind the ultimate edition. Now, we've got a number of use cases that, uh, that we support. Uh, this is uh, kind of a, <laughs> it's a bit of an eye chart, but it kind of shows all of the different basic functionality that we provide, right? So you see the, the master orchestration engine there in the middle. Uh, really everything kind of feeds into that, right? Whatever we've monitored and analyzed can feed into that to take action and remediate things. Um, same for compliance automation, right? If we find something that's out of compliance, we can remediate that. Um, the cloud native uh, can feed into that as well and, and uh, you know, use that orchestration for deployment, all of the infrastructure automation, database and middleware, um, all of the analytics, everything hinges on that, that orchestration engine. And, and all of this comes together to provide a number of key use cases, and we're going to cover a couple of those today. Um, and with that, I'm going to pass it off to Kieran to go through uh, those use cases with you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we hear you, Karen. All right, thanks, Gary, and welcome, everyone. And uh, we are glad that you can join us. So I promise you there's going to be three more slides before I get to the first demo. 
So first and foremost, let's talk about the key capabilities that you would expect of a cloud management platform. That is to give you, you and your users a world-class experience in providing that self-service portal that is customizable. In addition to that, the key differentiation for, uh, from us uh, is the ability to provide that in a multi-currency format so that you can pick and choose the currency of your interest. Next, the ability for you to um, upgrade uh, the services that are out there to the latest and greatest. And the other thing is the ability for your customers to kind of monitor their current usage, review them, modify them, and make changes as and when they use it. For all of these things to happen, you need to have a powerful graphic designer uh, that provides you the capability to drag and drop and uh, design these complex services. And as for any enterprise applications, these needs to be um, talking to multiple systems across uh, different IT systems. It could be databases, middleware, it could be uh, service management systems. So ability to talk to all these systems um, via out-of-the-box workflows is one of the key strengths. Um, and uh, the, when you provide the service, uh, the ability to talk to all of them and at the same time orchestrate uh, all of these is uh, one of the key strengths. Now, when you extend that capabilities across multiple clouds, irrespective of whether they're private or public clouds, um, this, this capability comes um, as a real benefit because uh, now we are not only talking about uh, the systems that are residing in your data center, but also across various uh, clouds and the technologies. For example, you have all these various orchestration platforms such as Docker, UCP, Kubernetes, and uh, managing the containers that are being deployed across those clusters and host systems is also a required capability. Next slide. And, um, and all of these, uh, not only providing this capability, but also has the capability to delegate some of the responsibilities to the uh, organizations administrators so that they can manage their workloads and at the same time manage who has access to those services and whether they are using it uh, optimally is uh, something um, that what we call as tenant management and that that is one of our key capabilities as well. So with that said, let me jump into uh, uh, first video. Uh, this is another slide where uh, we talk about you're all familiar with um, VM monitoring where you kind of capture all the various metrics associated to VMs like CPU, storage, and what have you. But if you extend the same, um, same terminology to the containers, now uh, we have the capability to monitor the containers that are deployed across the various orchestration platforms and uh, also be able to tap into the, the clusters and uh, monitor those uh, whole systems and the applications that are deployed on these containers. Uh, we have what we call as a management pack, which can extend these capabilities across various public clouds. The first use case which I'm going to talk to you today about is a customer use case where we will be managing a fleet uh, via a application called fleet management application. So in this example, I will roll a video and uh, I will talk through those. So in this case, uh, what we are seeing here is a fleet management application where each of the truck represent a GPS simulator and that applications are sending the stream of data back to a main application um, which, will, uh, which will represent each of this fleet as a dot on the map. Now, extending this capability uh, across the various orchestration platforms here, we're talking about uh, Docker UCP, uh, Marathon Mesos or uh, uh, HPE Staccato. So uh, the key strength here is for HCS to be able to a single point of uh, uh, administration um, where you can manage all these containers that are deployed across these various uh, platforms. Um, as you can see, uh, the ability to abstract that capability and uh, have the capability to deploy these containers across the various platforms is uh, what we call as our key strength. As you can see here, you have an application um, that is deployed on HP Staccato, and the containers can be deployed across the various platforms, and these can be managed across uh, various types of clouds. 
Uh, and um, as you can see, these containers can be scaled uh, out or in. And to start off with, we have two containers that are currently hosted on HP Staccato, as you can see in this map. And they're sending the real-time information about their current location. And currently, we have two instances running. Now, if you have an administration portal for Staccato, which can enable you to kind of um, scale up and scale down these instances with, with the drag of that slider. And as you can see, these are all spun up with VMs that are being built uh, using the Docker. Um, with the, just a slide, uh, as you can see, you can, you're quickly build, ramping up those uh, containers and you are having about about 14 containers right now. Now, using the Helion Cloud Suite administration, you will be able to manage multiple type of cloud. Uh, for example, here is Staccato, and we have other providers such as Microsoft Azure, Mesosphere, as well as you know, Amazon AWS and the Docker UCP. Um, now, how do you bring all these things in the single design is what uh, we will show you now. So using the graphical designer, which I just talked about, the uh, graphical user interface, we'll be able to pick and choose a particular application uh, design. And we bring in all these various cloud providers, what we just talked about, the Staccato, Docker, um, DCP. And uh, also, you need to have a common application components like the UI for uh, showing that uh, information. Now, you can be able to quickly test this application design by selecting um, an environment and selecting the components that are part of the application service. Um, and you can specify the instance count for each of the type of uh, the various providers. For example, Docker Mesosphere, we are saying 100 uh, containers. And you can pick and choose where you would want to deploy these uh, containers. This could be on a public cloud like Amazon uh, AWS, or it could be on the vCenter. In this example, we are showing you a already pre-built or pre-deployed application so that you know we can save some time and walk through the topology. Um, since this was a large deployment, this was pretty crowded. So when you zoom into those, you are seeing the application components on your left-hand side and the clusters and the various type of orchestration platforms like your Docker UCP and the containers and the applications that are being deployed on these containers in this topology. Now if you drill down, now you'll be able to see uh, the each component for all that particular deployment. And on the right-hand side, you have application properties. Uh, in this case, you can select the application URL. And as you can see, this particular uh, represents uh, the new uh, deployments. And on the right-hand side, you see uh, various uh, deployments from different containers uh, using different clouds and different technologies. Right? You can see Staccato, Swell Instances, Mesosphere 15, and uh, Docker. Now, how about all these manage? Like HCS uh, manages um, the various container orchestration platforms, and they in turn manage the containers that are being deployed in their environments. In this case, we are showing you Docker UCP control pane, um, where it is managing all the various containers that are currently being hosted. And you have here Mesos, which is showing its own representation of the containers and the marathon and uh, the container that it's currently managing. Uh, the, so the key strength here is it's yes to manage all this from a single point so that your customers can benefit no matter what type of technology or what type of uh, cloud they choose uh, for the workloads they would want to deploy. So let's move on to the uh, next key use case, that is, ability to develop and deploy um, uh, cloud-native application. So here are a few more slides, um, so because I want to uh, double-click on our Helion Staccato capability. It's a cloud-native application platform um, that embraces both simpleness as well as openness. Um, openness in a sense like it is a platform that is being built on Cloud Foundry uh, with Docker as an embedded feature, as well as in you know, a relies on OpenStack. Um, it's pretty comprehensive in terms of support to various um, frameworks such as Java, .NET, and the ability for them uh, to be deployed across multiple cloud. Now, you can expand this deployment process to various stages of your pipeline um, in terms of development, testing, staging, and production. Uh, the easiness comes with the fact that you would be able to uh, provision or request the services, for example, uh, requesting a 
platform uh, without worrying about the underlying uh, in, you know, system configurations or plumbing. Um, once you have the development system ready and built your uh, application, now you can easily test this across various uh, applications, um, test this across various uh, test automation systems by easily provisioning and configuring them. Um, now you can replicate um, any number of these environments by uh, just uh, by pointing to various uh, stages in your development process. Uh, to give you a little background on the Cloud Foundry that um, Helian Staccato is uh, from uh, from Cloud Foundry and it is based on the Cloud Foundry. And the difference here is you have the administrative console for, for you to easily manage applications that are being deployed, uh, whereas Cloud Foundry comes with only command, only um, mode. Um, and it also leverages Docker technologies and has support for multiple runtime systems. And you have uh, also HPE support um, in providing you those, uh, those services. And uh, as you can see, this is based on Cloud Foundry. So I will quickly jump into the next uh, use case, wherein here we're talking about uh, deploying a cloud native application. I'll roll the video. In this case, uh, we're talking about a, a demo where it is an expense management system where you can track your expenses um, in terms of you know what type of uh, date this is uh, the expense has been made and the categories and what have you. In this case, it is powered by Helium Staccato and uh, on uh, Microsoft Azure. As you can see, this has an uh, administrative console where you have a client and a mobile application. So the ability for your organizations to manage all these different applications as a microservice is one of the key strengths. Um, in here, we are talking about uh, managing this mobile application that is purely built on cloud native way. Um, and it does the same functionality like picking up a category and also specifying the amount and what have you, right? Now, the ability for you to uh, scale up and scale down that um, instances is uh, done through this uh, administration portal where you have the ability to go in and check the current memory usage that is um, and the current droplet, droplet usage here. Droplet here is we're talking about containers um, and when you slide use the slider to scale up uh, the instance count um, new instances are being created. Um, in this case, uh, the Docker containers are created. So that way you have the automatic uh, scaling capability that is built in and is expected for any of your cloud native applications. Now you can also further expand this with attaching to a policy uh, wherein you, know, you can set some thresholds so that you can automatically scale uh, depending on the CPU usage. Um, and as you can see, when you use that policy, uh, it will automatically take that into consideration and start scaling uh, depending on the bandwidth or the usage uh, metrics. Now, how do you combine this with uh, uh, the latest and greatest uh, uh, development activities which your team has been working on? Um, so you integrate with GitHub wherein you have uh, the ability to manage your source code repository um, and point it to a particular project and a particular branch. So in this case, we are talking about you know, integrating with um, available uh, source code repository uh, that we already have. And you pick the project and the runtime environment that is required for that, uh, for the, for that project to work. Now you pick and choose the uh, environment that you have just built, and uh, you would then use it to make that latest code deployment. Now you can also expand on that uh, capability by integrating with the other tools. Um, now you have the capability to work on this particular um, application by looking into a couple of factors such as you know your environment details, your source code details, and you can trigger the new builds by making changes to an existing source code repository. Um, in this case, you know, you log into the source code repository and, you know, you can start with a simple uh, change to your HTML files. Um, in this case, you know, you're making a code change to a HTML file here um, just by changing some of the text within uh, the tags. Um, in here, we are modifying the title of this uh, application to uh, submit expenses on a go. 
um, and once you make the code commit, uh, that would trigger uh, the build process associated to it, and uh, this is through uh, the web hooks um, that we already have in place. So once the code has been committed, you can see the, there's a build happening here, and followed by some testing that's required uh, as part of your development dev test. And uh, you would also be able to see the changes that's been propagated across your uh, source code repository. Um, and uh, you would also be able to integrate with your automation test tools so that the changes are being properly tested before you roll. Now, if you refresh this particular screen, you would be able to see that these changes are now reflected in this new um, mobile application. So the key strength there is the ability for you to uh, work on multiple um, technologies and uh, make those uh, technologies available to your developers rather than working on uh, worrying about the configuration of those systems. And that's the uh, ability of your platform as a service capabilities that we offer you through Helium Staccato. Um, so the key strength here is no matter what type of uh, container orchestration platforms or where these containers are being deployed, um, whether these applications are traditional or cloud native, we have your um, we have support for all of these technologies in various clouds. So this particular slide we uh, we talked about in the in the uh, start of the presentation, uh, the ability for us to deliver um, your your um, DevOps across the various uh, types of uh, clouds uh, by packaging all these um, capabilities. So the key uh, third use case is for us to um, look how you can uh, do analytics on the workloads that you just deployed. Uh, for that, you need to be able to first analyze what is being uh, deployed in your environment, uh, primarily through uh, analyzing the topology uh, in terms of um, whether this uh, topology interacts with the various infrastructure elements and the applications that are being deployed on this um, uh, infrastructure elements that are being used by these infrastructure elements and uh, learn from them in terms of, uh, such, for example, looking into the patterns um, and, uh, base, uh, and adjusting the baseline so that if there is any anomaly, you would be able to uh, catch them. Um, now, once you have the baselines um, adjusted, now you will be able to correlate that across uh, various metrics uh, that you have uh, uh, identified. Uh, so once you have the correlation in place, um, you would also be able to learn and be able to predict um, some of the changes that's happening in your services so that you know you can catch them before uh, it impacts your customers. Uh, this also done through uh, a visualization so that you would be able to quickly see what's been happening in your data centers. Uh, as well as you know, able to uh, make those changes uh, using the workflows uh, that uh, you might have already put in place in terms of remediation. Uh, so these are all key capabilities that you would need uh, in order to operate at scale. Um, and uh, the only way for you to do that is to uh, learn as you uh, as you operate. Uh, so that's where, where machine learning comes into play in terms of analyzing the data which you already have, um, reading through the data that's coming through and making the decisions uh, based on that data. Um, so for that, you need to have um, a clear insight into the data that's coming through. Uh, so that means you need to have an ability to connect to multiple data sources. Um, so what we have uh, here is, is the connectors that can talk to multiple data sources. Um, and these connectors can across uh, can run across the various uh, infrastructure elements, uh, so that you can track networks, storage elements, as well as you know servers, as well as applications that are deployed on those applications, um, so that you know you have a data point from uh, different elements. Um, you would be able to see them um, at at uh, any point in time and in a time lapse, or what we call as a playback mode, so that you can track the data coming through and the anomaly to that data as well as changes that uh, changes that's happening to that data. So that way you will have an ability to pinpoint the root cause uh, of that uh, change and you can map it back to a, 
event or a log uh, entry so that you know you can know that you know this was happening because of a certain event um, and bringing that whole information in the form of a dashboard as you can see on the top left corner you have a pictorial representation on the same type of information um, you will have in the associated log as well as the event uh, that's, um, uh, that it's related to. Um, so one of the key strengths is ability to search a uh, different type of data and uh, that is on the HVS patent technology where you would be able to both learn the language um, and also be able to um, gather, uh, able to analyze the data that's in through. Um, the solution here is to provide this search across the various uh, events and uh, the topology and the log. Uh, so that way, you know, your IT operational personnel will be able to um, assess that information as well as take some corrective action. Now, once you have that information, now you should be able to correlate that and uh, provide some meaningful insights into that information, right? So that's where, where we were talking about, you know, taking two different metrics and try to correlate that and see if there is any relation between these two and uh, so that, you know, cause and effect can be established. Um, so that way, you know, you can um, mark that particular uh, event as one of the data elements which you would want to monitor in the future and uh, so that way, you know, you can proactively uh, take action before um, before the problems are re problem reoccur. So in this, uh, uh, this is another video where we will here we'll be talking about uh, a event that. Uh, so in this case, you know, we are talking about uh, a advantage banking is a fictitious uh, application which which um, uh, which was experiencing a problem. In this case, you know, there there is a, what we call as a, a slow response time. Um, and you can see that in the heat map, and that is also affecting the financial metrics. In this case, uh, the the manager here is observ observing that there has been a slow response time, and uh, and that will affect the financial metrics uh, associated to uh, the bank. Um, in this case, you know she wants to find out uh, what exactly happens, so she's using what we call as a playback mode where she goes back to uh, the time, goes back in time to find out what exactly happened uh, for this cause, uh, for this to, um, you know, for this uh, anomaly. Uh, she's, she found that there are some data elements which happen uh, at a certain point and that relates to uh, a change to a web logic, um, uh, web logic configuration. And uh, when she drills down to that particular data element, she's seeing that there are a couple of changes that's been made at a certain point in time, and she wants to look into the details on uh, what those changes are. Um, as you can see, she's, she's looking at an anomaly where somebody made a change to WebLogic configuration, and you can go or uh, drill down to that particular event, and it will show you complete details on what the change is and who made that change. And as you can see, there has been some configuration change uh, and that's happened. And since that has happened, as you can see, there's only one change that has happened um, around that time. And you see that as a one particular event on the right hand side. Now, she wants to know further into, you know, what was the reason for the change uh, and if that can be avoided in the future. So, uh, so what she does is, you know, she wants to first track that event by uh, marking that uh, with uh, the icon there, um, so that you know she can uh, keep that as a, one of the knowledge uh, items, and she wants to also figure out, you know, what uh, who has made that change, um, so the reason for that change, so that you know she wants to uh, track this particular message group, so that you know in the future if this happens, she will be able to, um, she will be able to. Uh, you know, know uh, the root cause for that. So in this case, you know, she's creating a metrics uh, so that, you know, she can track that change in the future. Uh, for example, you know, tracking the logs and adding that particular item to uh, one of the uh, benchmark metrics. Now, she goes back to the dashboard and uh, she would want to further uh, identify what was the uh, uh, cause for that problem in terms of, you know, managing um, those uh, logs and also trying to see what's the root cause for that. 
and she wants to correlate that with uh, other metrics. For example, uh, she's also defining uh, the various uh, uh, metrics for that in terms of you know what's uh, whether this is going to be uh, a highly relevant information so that she can attach a uh, priority to it. Um, and you can also drag and drop and kind of correlate two types of event. Uh, in this case, you know, two types of uh, benchmark performance indicators. So that you know, if it is if it's due to the response time and if it is affecting the financial metrics, then she can uh, see that you know either because of a lot of load on that particular application, is it the application's uh, response time um, slowing because of that? and how that both of them are correlated. So that way she can make some, um, what you call as uh, is informative additions to see if this can be avoided in the future so that it wouldn't have an um, impact um, and uh, take cor correct action. So let's uh, jump into the Q&A and see if we have any questions in the question manager. Okay. Yeah, this is Jim Copio, and I'm going to moderate the Q&A. There's actually quite a few, so we'll try to hit them all if we can. And again, if we do not, they'll be posted um, on the uh, Vivid webinar link for later. Okay, here we go. All right, we do have a question. Where can we find the information on the 8,000 plus OO flows? Kerry, can you pick that up? Yes, absolutely. Um, so as far as the, the various flows and operations that are available with operations orchestration, we do have documentation on that and we can also provide, uh, you know, it comes with the product documentation, but we also have listing of the various flows um, and that gets updated with each release. So with each release, we add more and more flows and more and more uh, resource actions and, uh, and the complete list and all of the different supported technologies uh, is available with all of the uh, product documentation on hpe.com. Okay. Uh, yeah. FYI, you, your voice is very faint, Kerry. Was, we heard you. I think uh, sorry. There. Is that better? Much better. Yep. Very cool. To Thank add you. more uh, to what Jessica said, so basically we will have what we call as a HP Live Network, where we maintain uh, various information on the various support for all these IT systems, and these are all what we call as a content packs, and these are available for our customers to download, and that's where where you have these workflows that will enable you to connect to various IT systems, um, and these are all downloadable and will be able to. Um, use it as part of your service designs. Perfect. Yeah, for existing, for existing customers, you would go there to actually download the content packs and things, but if you haven't already purchased it, then you'll need to get it from the documentation. Okay, let's move on. Um, here's another good question. Um, is it possible to build service designs for multiple clouds? Kiran, can you grab that one? Um, can you repeat that? Uh, what was sure. the question? Is it, is it possible to build service designs for multiple clouds? Yes, that's uh, one of the key strengths of um, HPE where the designs are uh, cloud agnostic. You design it once and run it anywhere. Uh, as uh, in one of our demo we were showing, um, you have the ability to talk to multiple clouds and multiple technologies and pick the right cloud for your needs as you deploy them. So these designs are cut across the various uh, clouds. Perfect, thank you. Um, we have a question from Keith. Um, I think this one also is for you, uh, Kiran. Where where are we getting the topology from? Is this UD, Universal CMDB topology? Yeah, there are a couple of things. Um, um, when you build uh, a service design, um, you are actually building the topology design as part of the system. But there is also a way to kind of correlate this information with uh, the UD, as the gentleman said. Uh, so the idea here is to have a consistent design um, being built both from the UD as well as uh, the, uh, the Helion Cloud Suite. Yeah, and, and UD, UCMDB is included in uh, premium and above. Or the, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 
premium and ultimate. Premium and above. Yes. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, another good question: Which versions of the products are integrated? I think, Kara, you want to grab grab that? Yeah. So, uh, so that is an excellent question and, and a common one that we get. So. With this new suite, um, again, the, the first version of the suite came out at the end of July, and this we will be releasing a new version of the suite each quarter, and so each quarter we will add the latest versions of the products. So all of the products that were available the day, you know, when the suite was released on July 27th, we will use those latest versions, and then each quarter we will be upgrading that. Um, and upgrading, you know, we do the integration testing and all of that to make sure that that all of the versions that were released that quarter come out in the new version. So, you know, depending on when you when you purchase it or when you upgrade, right? Uh, you will you will always have the latest versions of the products with that are within that suite the day the suite was released. Makes sense. Perfect. Um, I think this might have been covered, but it is a question, so let me um, articulate it. Uh, Compliance automation was mentioned as part of the Helion Cloud Suite. Uh, can you tell me more about what that does and how it could help? Yes, absolutely. Um, so one of the products included in the suite is a product called IT Operations Compliance. Um, it's a relatively new product uh, from HPE. It was actually released, it's been about two years now, so for, for HP software that's kind of new. Um, but it, it is the one that is providing the compliance functionality. And so, uh, as I mentioned before, in the premium edition, you get that for the operating system level and hypervisors and, and basically your infrastructure. And then when you get into ultimate, uh, you get that at the service level. So at that point, it will look at compliance for databases and all of those types of things. And uh, just like with the orchestration product, it has content packs depending on what type of compliance you want to do and what uh, components you want to look at compliance for. So if I want to look at um, PCI compliance, for example, then I would go and download the PCI compliance um, content pack from HPE Live Network and import that into, you know, you just download that into iTalk and it will then give you all of that content to go out and give you the proper checks uh, and remediation actions uh, to make sure that your environment is meets that particular compliance. So we, we support compliance for, gosh, I'm trying to think of what, what all we support. I know PCI. Um, DSS. Um, DSS, uh, thank you. Yeah, the, SOX, and, and, SOX and we have SOX, that was the other big one. And then we've also got just some general standards. So, uh, for example, Docker containers. We have content for Docker containers. There is no PCI restriction, if you will, or, or compliance standard for Docker containers, but we have the content of what Docker recommends, right? Here's how you make sure that you're secure and compliant uh, for Docker containers, and then you can apply that to various policies, right? So if you want to add that to uh, to whether it's, you know, you want to create your corporate standards based on those types of things or whether you want to um, apply additional standards on top of uh, the basic standards that have been provided by the, the various um, organizations, right, whether it's PCI or SOX or whoever. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, excuse me. Uh, Kieran, I, I think this one might be a good one for you. Um, here's the question. Uh, you quickly showed a screenshot of container discovery before the second demo. Can you give us more information on what that does and how it works? Sure. So as and when your containers are being deployed uh, on the various uh, clusters and the host and the various clouds which uh, the customers might have choose. So what it happens, uh, what happens there is what we call as a runtime service model. Or So as and when a service has been deployed and depending on the infrastructure it's using and the containers it's using, we will build a runtime model. So as and when the runtime model has been built, you provide management packs, what we call as a monitoring management packs which will enable um, the, as and when the service is being provisioned, you provide hooks into those uh, containers, um, be it at the cluster level or at the host level. And what happens then is uh, ability for those clusters to stream that information on uh, where the containers are being 
uh, managed and what type of applications have been deployed on those containers. Back to uh, the operations uh, or what we call as operations management portal. Uh, which will then enable the IT administrators to look into uh, the deployment and also be able to track their usage and the various metrics associated to their uh, usage. Okay, thank, uh, thanks, Kiran. Um, I have one for Kerry. Um, let me just find it here. It's from Keith again. Uh, is there an upgrade path to Helion Cloud Suite defining or defined for existing SAOO customers? So we are working on, um, for lack of a better word, upgrade SKUs, right? So that customers who currently have uh, components within the suite, particularly SA, OO, and CSA, uh, CSA being the uh, cloud service automation, because those are key components within the suite, we are working on uh, ways to help our customers do an upgrade to, you know, from those individual products, or maybe they have two or three of those products. Uh, to be able to upgrade to the entire suite, yes. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, uh, Kieran, here's one for you. Um, can the S, I'm sorry, can the CSA service design be modular? Question mark. Um, like in OOEF flows, calling other subflows, like inside a service design, you can call other designs. Um, no. Um, I think you know, I, we need to get back to you on that um, after checking with the team. Okay, so so we'll do some research and you'll see the answer posted in a few days um, on the webinar site uh, for Vivid. Cool. Um, Alexander has a question. Uh, I think I think I understand it. It says replace HCS CSA question mark. Kerry, does that make sense? Yes, it does, and um, uh, that kind of goes along with the, the upgrade piece, right? So CSA, as I mentioned, is a part of the Helion Cloud Suite. You would not replace CSA with that, but you would upgrade and essentially just add the other components within the suite. Okay, that, that makes sense. Um, just trying to see what other new questions have come in. We're almost finished with questions. Where we can find There's them. something about OPSAE and OpsBridge and metrics. Okay, I'm looking for that now. Just bear with me. Yeah, I could be, I could be missing that, Kerry. Um, let's see. Oh, here it is. Um, for, so for OPSA, to what extent are, are we relying on OMI and OpsBridge for events and metrics and topology versus other vendor tools? Um, can OpsA function without any of the other HPE tools? So we do um, rely heavily on OpsBridge. OpsBridge is included in the suite. So I wouldn't suggest you function without OpsBridge. <laughs> um, just given that it's there, you might as well use it. But we also can take feeds from other vendor tools as well, right? So we can take feeds from um, Splunk. Splunk. I was just saying that was like starts with an S. Um, yeah, so we can take feeds from Splunk and, and other tools, uh, but also from from OpsBridge. So it, you know, the more feeds you provide, right, the better the analytics. Okay, makes sense. Thank you. Okay, let's see. Okay, that's what you just covered. I think that may wrap up our questions. So we actually have five minutes to go, and we're going to get done a few minutes early, which is always good. Um, I think we have one more slide. If you can progress that, uh, Kieran, please. Sure. It's basically a wrap-up slide. I'm required to say these things, <laughs> but uh, no, seriously. Um, you'll you'll get an email in your inbox um, asking if you'd be kind enough to fill out a quick survey. It literally takes 60 seconds, so if you could kindly do that, that'd be awesome. And um, and again, this is recorded, so you can pick this up in a couple three days. The slides, as well as the recording, as well as the Q and A, um, and we'll add the one or two ones we had to research that we could not answer. So with that, I appreciate the presenters, um, Kieran Kerry. Thank you so much. Awesome. We had a good crowd, by the by the way, and look forward to announcements on uh, part three. Um, I assume sometime in September, maybe. 
uh, and that'll take this another level and uh, keep educating all the customers and partners on Helion Cloud. So thank you and have a great day. Bye-bye. Everyone, thanks for your time. Bye now.